Good evening. Good evening, students. Good evening. Welcome. How are you today? Very good, teacher. And you? Happy to listen, Dad. I'm really good. Ready for the class. Nice. Awesome. How was your day with the salience? Was good? Uh, yeah, kind of. I only sold, uh, sold one, but one is one. So <laughs> congrats for me. Yeah, yeah it's the one is one. Month, so it's kind of slow at the beginning, so eh, it's okay. Okay, very nice, good. And what about your car, teacher? Oh, um, uh, well, my car is fixed already. I have to take it uh, into the repair. But right now it's ready. It's working right now. Thank you for awesome. asking. Nice, teacher. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but to hear that. Okay, thank you. Teacher Salvador is writing in the WhatsApp. He says that he will be a listener because he's sick. Yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. Uh, he's sick. He's uh, he wrote in the in the WhatsApp group. Thank you, Belen. You're welcome. Okay. Teacher, one question. Yeah, tell me. Uh, what is your opinion about watch series in English about to practice or I don't know, or maybe have more vocabulary or what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, watching series is a good way in order to uh, improve English because uh, you get accustomed to the idiom and that's what you need. You got accustomed to the language. And of course, they use some phrases that are going to be useful for you. You're going to um, listen to like, um, they have idioms. Tienen los idioms que les he mencionado muchas veces, ¿verdad? Okay. I like in Spanish. Yes, like in Spanish. And so when you get accustomed to that in English, so it's going to be useful for you in order to apply in a real life. That's good. Yeah, it's a good way. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Okay, welcome. Good evening, Rosibel. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Uh, I, uh, okay, yes. I was, yes, because yesterday I have a sick and I I just sleep early. Okay, just so sleep, I, sleep. okay. So you were sick yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I I sent message to message in the chat. What's up? Did you send yesterday? Yes. Let me check. Report me. Report me sick, and I can. Teacher, I'm it. sick. I can join the class. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, the thing is that it appeared just Rose. Yes. But I, I wasn't sure it's for you or Rosemary because we have oh. Rosemary. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, okay, that's nice. Okay. Okay. Um, what happened is uh, that, and I I don't have all your phone numbers in my um contacts because 
the groups is created by the office, right? So yes, I'm just, no. uh -huh. so that's why I, I get confused sometimes and I have to identify by the name that it appears in the moment of the number, right? Okay. But yesterday yeah. I, got, I got confused yesterday. Okay, sorry, my apologies. I don't write my name. No, don't worry. It's okay. By your better. Yeah, I I, I I didn't write. I didn't I, write my name. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, I I feel better. I know. Okay, very nice, good. So that part of simple pass is something that we're going to be working today because I've seen that you have a lot of problems. You are, um, I mean a whole group, right? All the class. Uh, you you have problems using simple past. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, that's what I noticed because sometimes um, uh, people want to talk about a past activity and are using, for example, present verbs, and sometimes you are using uh, a a expression that you want to refer to past, and you use all the structure, but the verb is in present, so you are like not using properly, right? So that's what we're going to practice today because I need you to practice. So we're going to have a practice today about uh, simple past because it's really necessary for you. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Okay, welcome. Good evening, Debbie. Welcome, how are you? Good evening, teacher. Good teacher. <laughs> okay, Debbie. <laughs> Ready for the class, Debbie. Yes. Okay. Very nice. Awesome. Okay. Welcome, Mariano. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, teacher. How are you today? Everything okay, teacher. Okay. And you? Awesome. Perfect. Ready for the class? Yes. Okay. Very nice. Aminda, good evening. Welcome. Hello, teacher. How are you today? Fine, fine. Awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. A tired day? Uh, sorry? Did you have a tired day? Uh, no. No, it was rela relax. A relax, yes. Okay, very nice. No classes today? Didn't you have classes in the university? No, I, I going to... Uh, I going to do a class or I give a class at or learn. What ah. is the bar we use? Okay, D you receive a class or you teach? Teach. Ah, okay. Ah, so I taught a class. Yes, I taught a class uh, yesterday. Ah, yesterday. Mo so Monday, Monday and Thursday. Ah, Monday and Thursday. And Thursday, yes. Ah, okay. So good. So you have three days. Yes, but third days, uh, I, I I have to go to the university because the my students mm -hmm. uh, they going to do a, a test. Ah, okay. Uh, so you have to go to the university, or, or you are going to. I going to. Ah, okay, okay. So they're going to have a test on Thursday. Yes. Awesome. Very nice. Okay. Good. Kill them. <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, very nice. Perfect. Okay, let me listen to uh, Roberto. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, teacher. How are you today? Uh, well, it, it was a busy day, but I think it was good because I, I have, I, I work um, in a lot of uh, issues, and I think it's, it, it was good. Okay, very nice. Awesome. Okay, what about the missing somebody else? Domingo, good evening. How are you? Okay. Adela, good evening. Welcome. No, okay. Then listen. Good evening. Oh, yes. Good evening, Adela. How are you? I am fine. Okay, very nice. Ready for the class? Excuse me? Ready for the class? 
Yeah. Okay, very good, awesome. Let me listen to Vanessa, good evening, welcome. Hello, teacher, good evening. How are you today? Fine, everything's okay, teacher. I just arrived from the chart. You, you wrote or you write? No, no, I, I just arrived. I, I just arrived. I just arrived. I just arrived. Ah, okay, very nice, good, awesome. Thank you. Okay. Walter, good evening, welcome. How are you today? Hello, good evening. Uh, fine, happy to be here again. Awesome, that's perfect. Okay, Super. very nice. Good, welcome. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, take the attendance list. So as soon as you listen your name, please tell me present, okay? Okay. Adela Trinidad Gonzalez Consuera. Present. <laughs> Very nice. Aminda René Figueroa de Manzano. Present, teacher. Okay, very good. Belén Patre Garcia. Present, teacher. Very nice. Carlos William Membreño Núñez. Debbie Yasmin Girón Ramírez. Present. Very nice. Domingo Alexander González. Present. Sí. Okay. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. José Roberto Martínez Bernabé. Present teacher. Very nice. Leticia Guadalupe García de Miranda. Mariano José Paca Santa María. Present teacher. Very nice. Rosemary Ventura del Guello. Rosibel del Carmen López. Present. Ok, very nice. Salvador Augusto Sorto Rivas. Present, mister. Ok. Ok. Sonia Ivette Alvarenga. Vanessa Noemí Reyes Lemus. Present, mister. Ok. Walter Omar Castaneda Perlera. Present. Ok, Wendy Karina Morales Amaya. Ok, very nice, good. Let me check here. Ok, very good, awesome. We're going to start with the class and we're going to uh, have a practice today. Ok, perfect. So, um, yesterday we had a practice about a some topics uh, about uh, you, right? Because you were asked about some topics yesterday. So you had the opportunity to speak a lot of with your classmates, right? Uh, about interesting things. There were many uh, questions that you couldn't finish because you were busy trying to talk about that, right? And I was like really happy in order to listen to you uh, the way you were trying to uh, produce the English. I'm really happy about that. Okay, awesome. But uh, as I told you yesterday, I noticed that you still have problems at the moment of speaking uh, about past activities, right? Because sometimes you want to talk about some uh, situations in past, but you use a, a verb in the present tense, right? So we need to practice about past activities. That's what we're going to practice today. Okay, so, but first I want you to, um, to, to I want to listen to you, okay? About what do you think is the most difficult part that you feel at the moment of speaking in the past? I want to listen to you. Be sincere and tell me what is the problem and what, what is that you feel that is not let, letting you to, Go with the pause as simple. So can you tell me? In my case, teacher, maybe, okay, it's like I can handle it, but um, like I noticed too is 
because I try to, or I already talk very faster. So it's like, I don't think first to talk. So it's like, I, it's like an issue that I have in my mind because in one hand I have that I want to talk very fluency, but in the other hand, I have that I have to think first to talk. So it's just like, uh, because I want to uh, talk very like flu with fluency, that makes me make mistakes. So uh, maybe in my case, that is a problem that I already noticed because I don't want to talk as slow. And even in the Spanish, I don't talk as slow. Even in my calls and in work, I have customers that told me that that maybe I can be a comentarista <laughs> because I talk very fast. But the point is that it's it's yeah, it's my personality already. So it's kind of difficult because I have to calm down and try to think first and then start start to talk. But it's oh. in my case because oh. I already know the instruction. I already know how to use the the opposite the, the negative. But it's like in my afan for por hablar así faster faster o como agarrando el ritmo ahí pierdo todo y ahí también mi error al confundir los tiempos okay very nice good awesome perfect okay what about the rest <clears throat> I want to listen to you what do you think is the most difficult part that you feel at the moment of speaking because I know this is about speaking no writing because when you write uh, the text or sentence that you are you notice saying, oh no no this is past oh no no this is this right okay so but at the moment of speaking i want you to um let me know what is the part that you feel that is not like easy for you or maybe you got confused for, <clears throat> for me uh, i think sometimes uh I can speak very well because I um, know many words. For, so I, I need to improve my vocabulary for express all, all of them thinking. Okay, okay, very nice. So you need like, what you think is that you need vocabulary? Yes. Okay, okay, very nice. Uh, but when you mean when you mean vocabulary, uh, you refer that the verbs are not inside, or yes, the verbs are inside of the part. The verbs, uh, the irregular verbs, and pass, and I need to uh, memorize in that. Okay, okay, very nice, good, awesome. What about the rest? For me, teacher is is uh, the same for Walter. Maybe the the vocabulary and memory side the the um, the verbs in past. Uh, I confuse. Okay, very nice, good, awesome, Robert. Yes, that that's the most common part, right? To get confused at the moment of using verbs. Okay, what about the rest for the rest? Is easy. For me, teacher, is uh, about remember uh, some words when the verb the verb changes. Also. Uh, I need to memorize that. And, and sometimes when I is, uh, for example, now when I explain uh, yesterday, I confuse the time. Uh, I, I, I think uh, in, in, in present, but in reality, need change to the past. Use the, the time the bar. Okay, okay, very nice, good. So I trying uh, what you you 
need is like to get in touch with the with the tense, right? In order to memorize how to use it and when to apply it, right? Yes, correct. Okay, very nice, good. What about the rest? I think the same like Rosibel. I forgot the moment and when I changed the, the time. <laughs> ah, okay, very nice, good. Awesome. Okay. Luwea, I'm going to explain it this into Spanish, okay? Because I want you to make it clear. So that's why I'm going to use the Spanish language, okay? Just because I want you to make it clear. But then we're going to start speaking in English, okay? Very nice. Okay. Simple past tense. El, el, el pasado simple, ¿verdad? Simple past. Lo utilizamos de dos formas. La primera es que lo, en el simple past va involucrado el task of B, que es este. Que este lo utilizamos como cuando estamos hablando del verbo to be para decir yo soy, yo estoy. Él es, él está, ella es, ¿verdad? Ella está. Ellos son, ellos están. Ok. Pero no puedo llevar otro verbo de, después de este. ¿Verdad? Por ejemplo, yo puedo decir, I was happy yesterday. ¿Verdad? Puedo decir, por ejemplo, they were um, in the gym last week. Puedo decir, por ejemplo, we were in, a, in an activity in, yeah, in a, no, we were in a, let me think of, it. okay, we were in a trip uh, a month ago, por ejemplo. Yo puedo decir, por ejemplo, um, I wasn't. Would you that time? Ok. Si ustedes se fijan acá, estamos utilizando el pass of B. ¿Para qué me sirve este pass of B? Para hablar de fui, ¿verdad? O estuve. Porque el verbo tuve me sirve para hablar de ser o estar. En este caso, como estamos utilizándolo en pasado, me sirve para hablar de fui o estuve. Yes. If I... Pues, eh, lo estuve trabajando. Ah, good. Ah, ahí eso es lo que le quiero decir. Me voy a echar el cafecito porque necesito. Ok, I'm, I'm tired. Today I'm tired, but I don't look like. <laughs> ok, I don't, no me veo como cansada, pero today I'm tired, really tired. Ok. Even you look very happy, teacher. <laughs> yeah, I look yeah. happy, but I'm terrible. I'm really tired. <laughs> Because I love teaching, that's why. <laughs> okay, very nice. En esa parte en la que ustedes se me están confundiendo. Y se los dije la, cuando lo empecé a explicar. Ustedes me quieren decir, yo estuve trabajando. Ando. Yo estuve comiendo. Yendo. Eso se utiliza en gerundio. Ese tiempo se llama pasado progresivo. Pas... I was working, ¿verdad? Yes, correcto, correcto. Progressive. Y acá sí puedo utilizar un verbo después del verbo to be, porque el verbo to be ya no es un verbo como acá arriba, miren, sino que acá ya es auxiliar directamente. Y entonces yo digo, I was. Eh, bah, digamos que la primera oración arriba solo le agrego un, un verbo I was working happy yesterday veamos cómo cambia la oración miren en la primera dice yo estaba feliz ayer o yo estuve feliz ayer ok paso B ahora acá Estuve trabajando feliz ayer. 
¿Es la misma oración? No. No, ¿verdad? Ya llevamos un verbo que es working. Y es acá donde ustedes se me están confundiendo, ¿verdad? Porque los verbos, los verbos de acción, ¿verdad? Les dije, me los van a utilizar con el ti. Que es la otra parte del pasado simple. Donde los verbos van en pasado. En la oración afirmativa. En la negativa. Y en la pregunta van en su forma base porque llevan el auxiliar. ¿Verdad? Sí. Ajá. Ah, se lo voy a decir en español. Uh -huh, uh -huh, o sea uh -huh. que voy a entender que cuando yo utilizo el was, no voy a utilizar un verbo. En, yo, para mí, o sea, yo recordaba que era el was y puedo utilizar el siguiente verbo en, en presente. I was work. Uh -huh. Yesterday. Es no. correcto. Oh. Is incorrect. Okay. Ajá. Is incorrect. Ahora, ¿qué puedo utilizar? Ah, pero eso, eso, Rosibel, ¿verdad? Es cuando estamos utilizando el pasado, pass of be. Uh -huh. ¿Qué puedo utilizar después del pass of be? Puedo utilizar adjectives. I was happy. I was tired. Y hay algunos verbos que fungen también como adjetivos. ¿Verdad? Por ejemplo, si yo quiero decir I was. Uh, pleased, el verbo please, pero con ed, ¿verdad? Pasado, significa que estaba encantado con algo, ¿ok? Pero ahí no está haciendo verbo, sino está haciendo adjetivo, ¿verdad? I was tired, ¿verdad? Yo estaba cansado, adjetivo, ¿ok? Entonces, por eso es importante ir conociéndolos. ¿Se recuerdan que una vez les di una lista de adjetivos? ¿Verdad? Que eran bastantes, por cierto, ¿verdad? Bastantes. Bien. Yeah. Ok, very nice. Es porque esos adjetivos los ocupamos con el pass of be. Y también los ocupamos tanto en pasado como en presente. Ok, y los podemos utilizar en futuro. Entonces, los, los adjectives son muy importantes. Ahora, con el pass of be, aparte de adjectives, puedo ocupar eh, lugares. Para decir que estuvo, ella estuvo en el gimnasio, yo estuve en el gimnasio, nosotros estuvimos en el gimnasio. Ella estuvo en la clase, él estuvo en la clase, nosotros estuvimos en la clase. Eh, nosotros estuvimos en el, en el restaurante, ellos estuvieron en el restaurante, yo estuve en el restaurante, él estuvo en el restaurante. Lugares, en el río, en el océano, en el parque, en el museo, etc. Right, ok, very nice. Pero no llevo otro verbo. Hasta ahí, ¿verdad? Porque solo estoy indicando que está. Luego, eh, puedo utilizar también profesiones o ocupaciones. Él era un albañil, ahora es un maestro. Ah, pues, she was a mason, now he is a teacher, ¿ok? Puedo utilizar eso, ¿ok? ¿Qué era antes? ¿Qué es hoy? Un antes, un después, ¿verdad? ¿Puedo utilizarlo solo en pasado? Sí. ¿En presente? Sí. ¿Ok? Pero ocupaciones, teacher, doctor, nurse, dentist, lawyer, um, whatever you want, soccer player, basketball player, a president, a mayor, a consul, etc., right? Whatever you want to do. ¿Ok? Ocupaciones, no más. ¿Verdad? Good. Los adjetivos. Cuando ustedes utilicen los adjetivos, los adjetivos no llevan nada de plural. ¿Verdad? ¿Por qué? Porque si usted dice, nosotros estuvimos feliz, ¿verdad? en español no tiene lógica, ¿va? Nosotros fuimos felices, estuvimos felices. En español sí. Ella estuvo feliz, nosotros estuvimos felices. En español sí, en inglés no. En el inglés, I was happy, she was happy, they were happy. No cambia. Él se adapta a su plural. El adjetivo siempre lleva esa forma base, ¿verdad? No tenemos que modificarle nada. Ok, pero hasta ahí no llevo verbo porque no estoy hablando qué es lo que estuve haciendo. ¿Verdad? Sino que hablé de cómo estuvo, ¿verdad? si estuvo bonito, feo. Eh, divertido, triste, aburrido, etcétera, ¿verdad? Ahí. O estoy hablando dónde estuve, dónde estuvieron, dónde estuvimos, ¿verdad? O estoy hablando qué fui, ¿verdad? O qué fue, ¿right? Hasta ahí. Pero si yo quiero hablar de qué estaba haciendo, oigan bien, o sea, en ese momento que usted estaba haciendo, eso se llama past progressive, porque usted está explicando, ¿verdad? Que en ese momento estaba en progreso esa acción. 
ahora viene la otra parte. Si usted quiere hablar de la otra parte que es, ¿verdad? El simple past con el did, ¿verdad? Donde acá sí ya llevamos verbs. Aquí ya llevamos acciones. Pero es muy diferente. Por ejemplo, esta misma oración que hice acá. Esta. La voy a hacer acá con el did. I worked. Oh, I worked happy yesterday. Ok, vamos a ver. Eh, Belén, ¿me puede traducir esta oración? Ok. I worked happy yesterday. Ok, traducción. Eh, ayer trabajé feliz. Ah, ok. ¿Y la traducción de esta? Ah, ah lo digo solo la traducción. Sí, sí. Eh, Estuve trabajando feliz ayer. Ok, muy bien. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre esta y esta? Las dos son pasados, pero ¿cuál es la diferencia? Um, el, el, el verbo cero está. Ok. Explico una acción que estaba pasando en ese momento. Good. Y miren, tengo tres oraciones donde he utilizado casi lo mismo. I was happy yesterday. Yo estuve feliz ayer. Sin verbo. Solamente estuve diciendo cómo estaba. Mi estado de ánimo. ¿verdad? Acá ya lo utilizo con un verbo de acción. Pero con el mismo simple pass. Y aquí digo yo trabajé. ¿verdad? Trabajé feliz ayer. O sea que ayer sí trabajó feliz. Pero hoy no. Lo que está diciendo es que ayer sí trabajó feliz. Ahora. I was working yesterday. Acá quiere decir que también es una oración en pasado y estamos hablando de que fue feliz y que fue ayer, pero que estaba trabajando. Ahí estamos hablando de un preciso momento, ¿verdad? Que puede ser, digamos, que en ese momento de que se estaba llevando la conversación, ¿verdad? Él estaba diciendo que estaba trabajando muy feliz en ese momento. Ok, ahora, lo que yo tengo que recordar es que todas aquellas verbos que llevan ando y yendo, las utilizamos con ING, ¿verdad? Como en el español tenemos el ando y el yendo, comiendo, durmiendo, saltando, ¿verdad? Ok, pero si quiero decir solamente trabajé, comí, dormí, estudié, utilizo el simple past, donde llevamos el did en las preguntas y en las oraciones negativas. Ahora, este es un verbo que lleva ED. Los verbos irregulares la mayoría llevan ED. Los regulares. Los irregulares son los que cambian en su forma. Se recuerdan que les presenté una tabla, ¿verdad? Que son tres grupos de verbos. Ahora, para yo poder manejar eso, necesito aprendérmelos. El pasado progresivo es más fácil porque simplemente es de utilizar el verbo to be como auxiliar con el sujeto correcto y el verbo con ing. Pero con este otro tiempo yo tengo que aprenderme lo que es la estructura de los verbos. Ok, hasta aquí a una question. No yet, teacher. No yet. Teacher, teacher o sea, para... Perdón. Ok, Rosibel y después Debbie. Eh, yo recuerdo que usted nos dio la presentación. Yo no sé si esto está subido en la plataforma o si nos puede compartir eh, su, el, la el, preparación el, de la clase. Uh -huh. el, el cuadro de los, de los verbos. Uh -huh. Ah, ok, sí. Vaya, se los voy a compartir. Cuando los mande a trabajar, me voy a conectar con el WhatsApp de la, de la computadora para poderles enviar la, el, el, el cuadro. Gracias. Ok, very nice. Sí, Debbie. Para estar claro. Ah, sí, sí. Eh, el did, solo con el did vamos a usar los verbos en pasado. En oración afirmativa. Oración afirmativa o negativa. No. Afirmativo. No. Solo, Solo afirmativo. afirmativo. Porque en la negativa y en la pregunta, a pesar de que estamos hablando mm, del pasado. Sí, el, por... ya el did lo hace el verbo pasado, aunque no esté. Excelente. El... Ya hace pasada la oración. Ya con solo que yo vea el did, ¿verdad? Ya me está indicando que estamos hablando de pasado. Ok. Ok. Very good. 
¿Alguien más? ¿Una doubt? ¿Or everything is clear? Clear, like water. Ok. Ahora, ¿qué es lo que tengo que recordar también acá en esta oración? Que yo puedo, yo puedo juntar tanto en una misma, ¿verdad? Oración, llevar el pasado simple y el pasado progresivo. ¿Cómo lo puedo hacer? Utilizo lo que nosotros le llamamos, ¿verdad? Los conjunction, que puede ser when o el while. Cada vez que yo utilice el when, I'm going to use when. Ok. After when, we're going to have a sentence with simple past. ¿Verdad? Cada vez que utilice when, vamos a tener una oración con el pasado simple. Cada vez que utilicemos el while, we're going to have a sentence with past progressive. Okay, very nice, good. But how can I use it? ¿Cómo lo puedo utilizar? Por ejemplo, okay, when you call me yesterday, comma, I was uh, taking a shower, for him. Good. Ok. Vamos a ver acá si me ayuda a leer esta oración, Vanessa. Ok. When you called me yesterday, I was taking a shower. Ok. Traducción de esa oración, Vanessa. Cuando tú me llamaste ayer, ya es tarde, pues. Yo Ajá. me estaba bañando, yo me estaba tomando una ducha. Ok, no me estaba bañando, ¿verdad? No hay problema. Ok. Tengo pasado simple, past progressive. Ya se fijaron, ¿verdad? Ok. Esta es una forma de poder utilizarla y decir, cuando algo es pasó, esto estaba haciendo. O sea, que al momento de la llamada, ¿verdad? Que cuando llamó, porque dice... ¿Cuándo me llamaste ayer? ¿Cuándo me llamaste? O sea, la que le llamó. Yo estaba dándome un baño. O sea, que la acción que estaba en progreso en ese momento es que se estaba bañando, ¿verdad? que me estaba bañando, cuando la llamada cayó. Que yo puedo decir esto. ¿Cómo? ¿Y por qué lo digo? Porque me lo permite el tiempo, ¿verdad? Utilizar simple past, past progressive. Ahora, ¿Puedo darle vuelta a esta oración? Sí. Puedo iniciar, por ejemplo, I was taking a shower. Aquí ya no llevaría coma. Porque el when ya me conecta las dos oraciones. When you called me yesterday. ¿Ok? Me estaba bañando cuando me llamaste ayer. Y tiene el mismo significado, ¿verdad? Tiene el mismo significado. Me estaba bañando cuando me llamaste ayer. Cuando me llamaste ayer, me estaba bañando. ¿Ok? El mismo significado. ¿Ok? ¿Hasta aquí una pregunta? No. ¿No? No. Ok. Y si ustedes se fijan, el when siempre va acompañado después de una oración. Simple past. O simple. Past simple, simple past. Ok, yes. Mean, good. Ahora. Esta misma oración la puedo utilizar con while. ¿Qué es lo que cambiaría? Es que ya el when ya no tendría ¿verdad? que estar ahí, sino que sería el while. 
pero ya no podría estar con el sin papá, sino que tendría que estar con él. Past progressive. Past progressive. Y puedo decir, por ejemplo, while I was taking a shower yesterday. Y el yesterday tiene que estar acá. Coma. You call me. Cuando me llamaste ayer, cuando, cuando me estaba bañando ayer, perdón, cuando me estaba bañando ayer, me llamaste. ¿Ok? O ayer cuando me estaba bañando, me llamaste. O mientras me estaba bañando, me llamaste. Good. Aquí ya cambia el orden de la, de qué, dónde llevamos el conector, ¿verdad? ¿Dónde va el conjunction? El while va con el past progressive. Y le puedo dar vuelta siempre, sí. You call me while I was taking a shower. Me llamaste cuando estaba dándome un baño, ¿verdad? Ayer. O cuando me estaba bañando. Bien. Entonces yo tengo que aprender a dominar estos dos tiempos. Porque también los utilizo frecuentemente cuando quiero dar una explicación del por qué algo no lo hice, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué no hice esto? Porque estaba haciendo lo otro. ¿Por qué pasó esto? Porque estaba haciendo lo otro. ¿Por qué no pasó esto? Porque estaba haciendo lo otro. Entonces, yo puedo utilizar ambas formas de esto. Pero lo que tengo que entender es que el pasado progresivo me sirve para hablar de algo que estaba en progreso en ese momento. Por eso se llama progressive. Y el simple past para algo que... Se terminó, ¿verdad? Ok, very nice. No questions. Ok, very nice. Good. Awesome. Ok. Time to practice, students. Ahora la parte de la práctica, ¿verdad? Necesito que practiquemos. ¿Y qué es lo que vamos a practicar? Good. Nos vamos a ir ahorita a trabajar en parejas, ¿verdad? Quiero que aprovechen el máximo. Try to speak a lot of English. And try to get like familiar with the verbs, okay? Um, what you need is to practice about speaking. Primero ustedes me van a trabajar, ¿verdad? así como lo voy a mandar en pareja. Me van a redactar las actividades ¿verdad? que ustedes hicieron. Uh, de, de dos días acá estamos hablando que hoy es martes de lo, del domingo hasta hoy lo pueden hablar algunas cosas en progresivo y otras cosas en pasado simple está bien, no hay problema pero no vamos a confundirnos ¿verdad? ¿qué es lo que quiero decir? para no utilizarlo diferente ok, ¿puedo utilizar pass of B? sí ¿puedo utilizar pass progressive? sí ¿puedo utilizar simple pass? sí ok me van a, a redactar un poco ¿verdad? luego ustedes ese texto ya después que la hayan escrito, van a tratar de decírselo a su compañero, pero sin leer el texto. ¿Verdad? Ok, lo va, ustedes lo van a formular, lo van a escribir, ¿verdad? Pero a la hora de compartirlo con su compañera o compañero, ya no lo van a leer, sino que lo tienen que decir de forma, ¿verdad? Porque ustedes se acuerdan qué es lo que hicieron, por eso les pongo esa actividad, para que sea más fácil, ¿verdad? Lo que les va a ser más fácil es porque como ya escribieron, ya se van a acordar cómo es la forma del pasado del verbo. En el caso de que utilicen simple past, ¿verdad? Ok, no sé si tienen alguna question. I teacher, I, I didn't hear. Can you repeat? You didn't? I'm sorry. Here. Mm. Thank you. Me neither, teacher. Ok. Eh, que vamos a trabajar ahorita con una actividad. Vamos a trabajar donde ustedes... En English ven. teacher. Ah, oh, oh, ok, ok. Very nice, ok. We're going to work in activity. You're going to write a paragraph about what you did like two days ago, from two days ago. Ok, from, from Sunday, Monday, and today, right? Ok. And you're going to use Pass of B, simple past, and past progressive if you want, okay? 
but you're going to write it because I'm gonna push you in pairs, okay? You're going to go work in, uh, in pairs. Then after you finish writing the paragraph, you are going to uh, tell your partner what is the activities that you, that you did, but you're not going to read the paragraph. Now that you finished writing, so you, you remember how to use the verb, you're going to tell your partner without reading the, the notebook. So try to be sincere with you because it's going to help you to remember the verb that you wrote. Okay, it was in past and do you remember how to use it? Okay, now the activities, that's why I put you to work with activities. Of course, you remember what activities you did. So you're going to use it. Okay, just speaking, but not reading the notebook. I push you to write because it's going to make easier for you at the moment of speaking. Now, is it clear? Like water? Yes. Okay, very nice. Let me arrange the paperwork. Okay. Okay, if you have any problem at the moment of uh, getting connected, just let me know, okay? Okay, there we go. Right now, you're going to write about your past activities, right? Yes, teacher. 
Okay, we'll I'm gonna try. We we'll try to do. Okay, very nice. <laughs> I'm gonna send you the, the the verbs in past. Okay, the chart. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, what is it? Are you working right now with activity? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, very nice. Good. Hello, are we clear with the idea that we're going to work? I think so, teacher. Okay, very nice. Did you receive the chart of the verbs in the WhatsApp group? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yes, we received. Okay, remember that those are irregular verbs, right? Okay. Okay.
Adela, ¿con qué grupo estaba trabajando? Amenda. Y Rosibel. Ya. Yeah. Ok, muy nice. There you go. Hello, teacher. Hello, how is it? Uh, we are writing our paragraphs. So that's uh, what the silence is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm checking because I know right now you're, you are writing your paragraph. Yes. Okay, that's the moment when you're going to share about your activities, right? Uh, yeah, uh, when, which is uh, Saturday and Sunday. No, yes. Uh, we're talking about the, our weekend. Uh, no, just from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and today. Part it's of more the... interesting the activity from weekend. <laughs> yeah, ah, because okay. instead of Monday, <laughs> only, we only because... work. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. well... like, I, like I told to Vanessa, is in my work, it's all always the same. It's the same routine as always, so it's kind of boring to explain. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's very short because I do I did the same every day. So you do the same. Yeah. So that's what we choose at the weekend because I don't know maybe has more things to do. Okay, very nice. Mm -hmm. Teacher. Yes. If you want to say que tu que en ese caso yo bañé a mi mascota, ¿cómo lo dice? Bañé a mi mascota. Uh -huh. I took a shower. No se baña solo. I took a shower for my pet. I took. Yes, I took a shower. Oh, I showered my pet. I showered. En pasado, showered it. Mm -hmm. Showered my pet. My pet. I showered my pet. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and what is the past of pick? Con ed, picked. Se, escribe, se ah. pronuncia picked, pero es picket, se escribe. Ah, ok, picked. Ok. Ok. Thank you. Awesome, welcome. Yes, how is it? Arrive, arrived. Arrive. ¿Cómo? Perdón que no le escucho muy clarito. Y el pasado. El verbo eh, arrive es el verbo. Llegar a casa, llegar. Uh -huh. Entonces ese verbo que tiene que convertirlo en pasado. Es alright. Ajá, con es ed. Regular. Es, ese es regular, ver, sí, va con ed. I... 
and arrived uh, late at home. Correcto. Llegó tarde a casa. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well, yesterday I I woke up here. I wake 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 up. Es el uh, wake es es irregular. Ahí sí walk. Ah, okay. I walk woke up uh, late and early mm -hmm. because because I I have I have I have stay at work at 6 a.m. because I work at 6 a.m. Uh, okay because I work at 6 at 6 a.m. yes Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's some confused. Yeah, it's, uh, but remember that all the actions that you talk right now are all about past. So you need to talk in past. Okay. Okay, very nice. Yesterday and <laughs> on Sunday, I I was I was driving when the schedule. Uh, you attend always uh, both, both, both jobs. A uh, bath job, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> a little, a little easy. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, the the class, mm -hmm. uh, I I teach the 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 class uh, twice a week. Okay. At night or in the morning? At night. So uh, the class uh, usually begin in up the from five, six six p.m. to eight p.m. Two hours. Uh, just to to <laughs> after that, English, I, uh -huh. I I I join in the in my English class. Yes. I'll give you see two days. During the week. Yes, and you? Uh, okay, but this is the for one day and now? Yeah. What is the activity for this day? Mm, for, for Sunday. Did oh. something? No, you did, you, you did, you. You spoke uh, uh, the, the trip in Apaneca. Yes. And one day you described to, to the activity, but this day? Ah, today. Uh -huh. Today is uh -huh. the same the same activities than Monday. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. In my case, uh, Sunday, I was showing my dog. Mm -hmm. Also, I wash my clothes. I bought some food for for uh, to the lunch. No, for eight. <laughs> for eight <laughs> lunch. I okay. went. To, I went to the church. Monday, I was working eight hours in the office. When I fell sick in the in the night it was horrible. <laughs> and um, not connect to to in to my to I not connect in English class. 
today I was feeling better in my illness and I worked uh, I worked fine. Okay. My activities. Uh, early, but early? I tried to early, but I tried to to get to went uh, get over later. Yes, I I tried to went early in the in the work. In my work, and, and this is a <laughs> this is is possible in, in San Salvador. No, but I try. <laughs> the traffic try in the morning it. is really heavy. Yes. Yes, and I went to the the office and work it in a report for the the conference or meeting I exposed the project and in the at at twelve p.m. I eight in race in ten exciting to see all friends that I hadn't seen before the pandemic. Well, while I was running this day. I forgot my problems, and at the same time, I was thinking only in the things that make me happy. <laughs> okay. Okay. I try. And <clears throat> the last Saturday I was to working. Well, al revés era. I was to working the last Saturday when you were resting. Okay, you okay, told... okay. Aquí una pregunta. Okay, okay. You were to working. ¿Cómo, cómo, cómo? Escuché, you were to working, o I was to working, no sé cómo la era. I was to working the last Saturday. Ah, ¿por qué el tú? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Debbie. <laughs> ok, es I was, I, was, I was working. Without two. Sí, el tú se utiliza cuando el verbo va en su forma base. Mm, ok, ok. Uh, you want to speak, you want to play, you want to read. Puedo utilizar esa misma oración, pero con el pasado simple. I had to work. Ahí sí. Yo tuve que trabajar. Ok, ok. Ajá. Pero mientras tanto tiene que ser, I was working. ¿Verdad? Ok. Ok. I was working the last Saturday when you were resting. Uh, it was very tired weekend. <clears throat> On Sunday, I woke up very late and it is something that is hard to me a lot because I woke up, I woke up very, uh, at 6 a.m. every day. So my <laughs> body had a biolic Biolic, 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 ¿cómo se dice? Biolic, no sé, biológico. Biologic, biologic. Bi bi biologic clock, very exactly. So it's hard to me wake up late. 
you change change your time to wake up. Walk walk up, no? I don't know. About the supermarket and teacher, how do you say mercado? Market. The same as market. Yes, the market. Okay, supermarket is like supermercado and market is just mercado. Yes. Okay. So the point is that uh, the, the, the last week uh, was my shopping day. Was my shopping day. So. Uh, shopping weekend. <laughs> yeah, my shopping weekend. Well, yeah, shopping day because it's only Saturday because in Sunday I, I, I didn't go out. So just Saturday. The point is that the Saturday was the most horrible day because it was like if I I was working all day because I left my home at eight and then I arrived at six PM. So it was like almost like a twelve Friday. hours. Yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like a Friday. So, oh my God, no, 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 no. And from Sunday, I was like just counting the hours that it, I have left because, uh, <laughs> no, it's kind of short. It's like a short day. I don't know. It's uh, The point is that to Monday, I was so tired and with a lot of pain. And for now, I just wait and wait until the weekend can finally end and have my really, really rest on the next weekend. Okay. Yeah, I think for me on Monday is the day that I feel or I felt so tired. This is the day I only want to sleep every day. <laughs> But I can't because I have to work. So for me, the, the rest Monday is the day when I accumulate tomorrow and all the all the cansancio. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> yeah. Well, in my case, well, it's kind of weird because for me, my favorite days of the week is the Monday, and. Um, I don't know why. It's just it's the beginning of the week. The week, so you have a chance to do the things for a different as as this, uh, um as the last week, for example. If you forget, if you forgot something about the mm -hmm. last week, you can do it in this week. So I don't know. For for me, the Mondays are the best day because you can start like i don't know as well as 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 fridays for example the 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 most common thing it's about the best day of the week is friday because it's the last way of the week but that mood you can have it on mondays because it's the beginning so you have to like start with the con el pie derecho so i don't know for me the mondays are the best but in this case, the Mondays, this Monday was kind of weird because I was so tired that I didn't, uh, I didn't feel anything. It's just so. Do you share each other the activities? Uh, almost. I can write the, the activity because I, I am in the, in the phone. And then the evening is arruinado, se ve oscuro, no puedo ver. So, so you just shared the, the activities, but uh, you didn't write anything? Uh, we talk. Only talk. Yes. Yes, teacher. Uh, in a in a in a moment we had problems with the internet because it's is 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 bad in sometimes. But okay, I don't know. 
Okay, but, but if, we, if you talk we, about it, okay, be, uh, try to remember what we talk because then we're going to uh, have the time in order to speak in uh, class. Okay. Okay. What else? What did what did you do today? <laughs> okay. I I I had um, some meetings. And um, I well, I had some meetings, and when I when I when I was in a meeting, uh, I have, I, I had to attend, um, I had to attend Okay. Did you finish? Yep. Yes, yes teacher. teacher. Okay. How was it? Very difficult to speak. Yes. Very ah. difficult for those. <laughs> for for 30, diga. For no, pero ahí digan en inglés, ¿verdad? For all. <laughs> no, ¿cómo es por dos? ¿Ah? ¿Cómo se diría por dos? Per. Per, per two. Per two, per thirty, per fifty. Per four, per uh -huh. four. Per, per, per four. <laughs> ok. Ok, very nice. Si ustedes lo escriben, ¿verdad que es más fácil, verdad? Sí, ustedes pueden escribir un montón, pueden utilizar eh, un momento el traductor, pero aquí hay, la cosa es el moment of speaking, right? Ok, at the moment of speaking, at the moment of sharing the ideas. Ok. Entonces quiere decir que si lo, lo escribo y puedo auxiliarme, ok, ¿qué es lo que tengo que mejorar? El speaking. Mm. But before the speak, maybe in my case, I try to the, the, the order my ideas. Is, ok. It's not that you try to order that idea. The problem is that you're thinking to Spanish. Yeah. Ese es el problema, que primero piensan en español antes de hablar en inglés. Big mistake. Ese es un gran, gran error, pero es el común. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ustedes lo que están haciendo es que su computadora primero procese la oración en español Luego le tire la orden de hacerlo en inglés, que busque las palabras, a ver si las tengo en el diccionario en mi mente. Si no las tengo, tengo que buscarlas. Y cuando usted quiere venir a hablar, el cliente ya se durmió. La persona ya se fue. 
porque la están pensando en English. Ahora usted tiene que, de un, en español, perdón. Ahora usted tiene que pensarla en inglés. Y usted me dice, ¿cómo cree que yo voy a pensar en inglés si ni siquiera puedo hablar? Ah, mientras no, no, deje, de, mientras no que... deje de pensar en, en español, se le va a ser difícil poder hablar porque siempre va a estar pensando en español primero antes de utilizar el language. ¿Ya es, Rosibel? ¿Pero cómo podemos pensar primero en inglés si primero tenemos que ordenar la oración? Mm -mm. Primero tienen que... Vale. ¿Por qué les he dado la estructura? ¿Las estructuras son para oraciones en español o en inglés? En inglés. Ah, ¿y por qué tienen que pensar en español? So it's about the grammar, teacher. Yes, it's mm -hmm. about the grammar. Okay, les he dado las estructuras de English, no de, no de español. Right? Okay, I, I, understand, uh, I understand the, the respect, the structure. Yes. And not thinking in Spanish. Okay. Yes, not thinking in Spanish. Yo estoy de acuerdo que digan, okay, empiezan a no decir, sé, ay, mm, mm, que quizás se le olvidó el verbo. Ahí sí. Pero porque usted se queda, mm, mm, y usted dice, ok, quiero decir que estaba, eh, que jugué softball ayer, por ejemplo, y usted queda, mm, I eh, play, play eh, baseball, yes. I play baseball yesterday. Mm -mm. Uh, para que usted tenga una conversación, si está pensando en español, se le va a complicar. Si usted tiene una clara, ¿verdad?, estructura de cada tiempo, lo que necesita es simplemente, ¿verdad? Utilizar la que corresponde a lo, a lo que yo quiero hablar. ¿Y por qué les digo que es fácil? El mismo verbo, ¿verdad? Lo puedo utilizar para forma gerundia, para forma pasada, para forma presente, para forma futura. El mismo verbo. El mismo sujeto lo puedo utilizar para todos esos tiempos. El mismo complemento lo puedo utilizar para todos esos tiempos. Lo que puede cambiar puede ser el auxiliar o puede ser alguna parte del complemento para explicar si es pasado alguna expresión de que diga yesterday, last week, last month. Si es una oración en futuro, next week, next month. Si es una oración en este momento, ahí. Pero de ahí lo que tengo que buscar es ese ordencito. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar para este tiempo que quiero hablar? ¿Cuál es la forma del verbo que lleva en este momento que quiero hablar? Pero no qué es lo que quiero en español primero, no. Tengo que buscar la estructura de cada tiempo. Por eso yo siempre le digo, esta estructura, esta estructura, esta estructura, ¿verdad? Para que no pensemos en español. Porque si pensamos en español, podemos estar en 40, 50, 60 cursos y se nos va a costar. Right? Okay, very nice. So, that's why I ask you to, por es, that's why I ask you first to write it. Because I knew it was easy for you. Because if you write it, it's easy. Then I decided to you to speak. Because uh, now it, it was going to be easy, right? Because you have a text. So it's going to just remember what you wrote. Okay, good. That, try to speak without thinking into Spanish. That's the key for success in English. Because you already have the vocabulary, vocabulary sorry. And you already have a the, some structures. I haven't give you all the uh, structure because all the tenses because I have to give you just the ones that I have tissue, right? No le he dado las todas las estructuras porque solamente les he dado de las que yo les he enseñado porque es las que me corresponde en cuanto al programa, right? Y algunas otras que yo les he dado extra. Okay, but you just need to identify like clue keys. Uh, eh, algunas, algunas llaves ¿Verdad? Que pueden funcionarle, que son importantes. Primero es, si ustedes un día tienen un momentito, tómense un tiempo para buscar cuáles son los auxiliares para cada tiempo. Busquen, bu tómense un momento, no les va a tomar ni, no creo que les tome más de 30 minutos. Son 12 tiempos lo que hay en inglés. 12 tenses, 12 tiempos. De, de los pasados, presentes y futuros. 12 times. Tensas, perdón. Tengo que aprenderme cuáles son los auxiliares que van con cada uno de ellos. Esa es una parte fundamental. Aprenderme los auxiliares para cada tiempo. Luego de eso, debo aprender 
qué forma lleva el verbo. Y debo estar seguro si la forma del verbo se mantiene tanto en la oración afirmativa, en la, en la negativa y en la pregunta, o si va igual, eh, o si va diferente en alguna de ellos. Good. Eso tengo que aprenderme. Eso es lo principal. Porque a esta fecha ustedes ya vieron casi todos los tiempos, ¿verdad? Ya solamente de, tal vez de desempolvar un poquito y de tomar esta idea. Si ustedes tienen que empezar a hacer eso para que ustedes sepan qué es lo que quieren hablar. Si quiero hablar en pasado, para así saber ¿verdad? si es una acción que no, estaba en, no la quiero hablar en progresivo, simple past. Si es una oración que la quiero hablar en progresivo, past progressive. Si es una oración que la quiero hablar eh, en pasado perfecto, también ya sé qué auxiliar. Y tengo que recordar que todos los auxiliares que llevamos en los tiempos, en su mayoría son verbos. El auxiliar del pasado progresivo, ¿cuál es? Was and were. Es un verbo que está fungiendo como auxiliar. El pasado del verbo del simple past, el auxiliar, perdón, ¿cuál es? El did. El pasado del verbo do. El auxiliar del present perfect, ¿cuál es? El have. Por eso se llama present perfect, está en presente, have. El auxiliar del past perfect, ¿cuál es? Have. have. Ok, very nice, good. Miren, clave, eso, eso es clave. El auxiliar para un futuro, will, will. going to. Ok, very nice, good. El auxiliar para el presente progresivo o los auxiliares. Am, is, are. Verbo to be en derivación. Am, is, are. Los auxiliares. Auxiliares solamente. ¿verdad? Y si ustedes se van fijando, todos son verbos. Ok, very nice. Good. Auxiliar para todo progresivo. Siempre tiene que llevar el verbo to be. Todo el tiempo que ustedes hablen de un tiempo progresivo, tanto en pasado, presente o futuro, van a llevar el verbo to be. Si hablan del pasado perfecto progresivo, yo había estado jugando, I had been playing, been, es auxiliar, had been, ¿verdad? es el auxiliar que vamos, el had y el been, been en past participle. Si utilizamos el eh, verbo el presente progresivo, was and were, verbo to be, ¿verdad? Si utilizamos el futuro, will be, miren, will be, I am going to be, playing, reading, going to. Llevamos el verbo to be también, aparte del otro auxiliar. Entonces, todo eso es necesario para que así yo ya no tenga que pensar en español, ¿verdad? Porque entonces ahí yo, te, yo me, me confundo. Pienso, estoy pensando en el tiempo español, pero que no lo puedo adaptar en inglés. Porque lleva diferente regla, diferente estructura, diferente forma. Ok, perfecto. Really nice. ¿Es it clear? Yes, sí. Ok, very nice. Good. So, I know that I'm trying to um, ask you too much. I know that I bother, right? Yo sé que molesto siempre exigiéndoles mucho, but, but what I want you is to speak in English because um, I wouldn't like to, to listen from you. Okay, I can write it, I can understand it, but I cannot speak in. So what we're doing, so, because I needed to speak, I need to communicate, I need to go to a place and to share uh, my ideas or to talk about something, right? So I need to speak English. And another thing that you need to do is try to speak more. Take advantage of the class. Speak as much as you can during the class. Tomen, tomen, eh, o agarren, o aprovechen es, las clases. Independiente estén conmigo o no, ¿verdad? En este, el siguiente módulo, o en este que estén, o en las otras clases que ustedes puedan tener. Try to take advantage of the time in English. Aprovechemos de hablar inglés. ¿Por qué? Porque aquí es donde más tienen ustedes la oportunidad de hacerlo. Right? Después de la clase es bien difícil porque van a dormir, ¿verdad? Pero los siguientes días ustedes están trabajando en español, ¿verdad? Con su mayoría de colegas. Al menos que usted tenga un trabajo donde pueda interactuar en inglés. Pero 
Pero here you need to take advantage. Try to speak the most as you can. Si ustedes me dicen, teach it, a question. Okay, yo no me voy a enojar porque yo quiero escucharlos a ustedes, right? Uh, interactive class, interactive class. And that's why you're going to get accustomed to speak English. But if you wait for a, a lot of time to speak and you get you don't get your mind accustomed to speak, you don't um, let your words come out, so you're going, it's going to be difficult for you. Teacher. Yes. Well, I I did some activities in my according to my work. Well, I work in a call center. So yeah, yeah. what I did was try to make my speech in English. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because that is something that I'm used to. I, I did every day. So um I I translate. Well, by myself, obviously, I don't use a translator. But the point is that I I made my own speech, based on my my daily routines about a work about my calls because it's the same speech as always. So I put it in English, and I had a conversation like in Spanish already. So I don't know. Then it's maybe for practice, but it helps me at, at the same at the same activity uh, for today. Uh, so, yes. Okay, there are some uh, some common words that they can, or, or maybe tenses that are a range of structures that can work in Spanish and the same in the in the English. But there are some ways in using that are different in order to tell the, a way in Spanish than into English. So the word is confused, right? But if you got an opportunity to do some, that's why I put you to work about your activities because it was going to be easy. You didn't have to think about something else just to think about what you did. So, but um, I know this part of the most the complicated that you have is to uh, speak English at least. But you're going to take advantage, okay? So right now, because I have, we have an activity, we need to work in this chart. Uh, yesterday we were working with um, this one, so we had another one. But before we have a uh, here in the space to talk about, and we it's about making suggestions to uh, managing uses uh, in a, in a warehouse, right? Okay. For example, here we have some questions. I would like to listen to uh, Aminda. Can you please read this first question until here? The first question. Yes. Okay. What are some common issues related to warehouse management? Okay, here we have the first question. What are some common issues related to the warehouse management? Good. Let's go with the next one. The next question, uh, can you please read it, Belen? Yes. Um... It's the second one. How can these issues affect productivity? Yes, very nice. How can these issues affect productivity? Good. Okay, here we have some part and says, imagine you are a warehouse manager and you are experiencing problems with inventory counts and misplay product. Which of the following uses will you solve first? Rank the issues from one, Less affect productivity to five. Mass affects productivity. Discuss the ranking with a partner. So right now, uh, you're going to go working in, in pairs or in the same groups that where you were, and you're going to um, order this product. Uh, this not, is not the product. It's the way of the thing, the most difficult problem and the easiest problem to solve, right? So you're going to rate from the least effects, so I'll, I'll, can menos affect the right and the most affects productivity. So which one are the most complicated part? So you're going to label from one as the easiest. Okay, number one. And number five, uh, this is number one. Uh, it's not like, okay. Number one and number five, the most difficult. So you're going to label it and you're going to try to talk about which one is the most complicated part. Okay, let's go right now to speak. Is your turn to speak? You're going to level it, but I want you to speak, okay? And after you finish that, after you finish this, you're going to put this in order. 
which one is in here, which the other is in here, and another one's in here. Okay, you're going to label the concept with the word that you have in here. Is it clear? Students? Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay, in this part of speaking, try to get an advantage and try to discuss as much as you can, okay? Okay, there we go. Hello, teacher. Hello, Mr. Are you still driving? No, I am finally at home. Ah, you're, you're, you're at home? Yes, I am finally at home. <laughs> okay, very nice, very nice. But I, I can see my partner. Okay, I'm going to move you to another group right now, okay? Thank you. Okay. ingressos inaccurate receipts and poor charge orders okay lack of communication between employees lack of cooperation between department time management and warehouse space and organization so, okay, Rosibel and Trini. Number one, lack of communication between employees, I think. Okay. Is it the number one? Yeah. Is it the, the it's, it's, yes, but affects in minor in our grade oh no no it doesn't know. no mm -hmm. okay because no. uh, this is least affect is is affect in minor grade yeah. and find is um major affect productivity is number five like our communication with one gray from from one to five you think I, the, the inaccurate receipt and purchase orders is the less of a productivity is one okay uh, you think is the most of a productivity is five but you think is no less but no most in the middle so is is three, for example. Okay, mm, the number one, I think, were warehouse space and organization, <laughs> or time I, management. I I think is the number five is the warehouse space and organization. Number five. Because, yes, because when the people don't know. What is the product? The all the employees spend time find this product, and this is affect directly of productivity. The productivity. Product. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
All the group is agreed. Number five, the last warehouse space and organization. Next, mm -hmm. what is the number four? The number four. Time management. Time management, yes. Labs a cooperation between departments, lack a communication between employees, or the first inaccurate receipts and poor shares orders. No, I think time management. What do you, what do you think, Carla? I don't know what meaning is lack. Lack, uh, I, I use the translate right now, <laughs> is falta. Falta de, oh. faltante. Lack of cooperation between the department. Falta de cooperación entre los departamentos. Falta oh. of communication between employees. Falta de comunicación entre los empleados. When a current receipt receipt and purchase orders. Receive orders to compra. Exactly. For me, okay. uh, I think inaccurate receipt and purchase order because it's relevant. You need to have the 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 accurate quantities about about your brochures for the for the inventory. Yes. This is for me, but I don't know. I think the five sentence is very important. <laughs> but the most important is five four, and and the three in the middle is inaccurate recipe and purchase order. This is number three for you. I think, yeah. Why is that less affects productivity? Times management or lack of cooperation between departments, lack communication between employees? Lack or lack of cooperation between departments. Departments? Es lo que menos afecta la productividad. No, the employees. The employees. The communication, communication between employees. For example, um, I I think I have uh, one department uh, for industry security or safety. Okay. So this is number four, then number three, because if you don't cooperate, you can communicate. Obviously. Then, then incur encourage receipts and purchase orders. It could be the second. Mm -hmm. Then time money. Time management. Okay. I don't know what time time management means. O sea, ¿qué se referirá? Time management. So you don't have time to to control the warehouse. I think. Teacher, what is time management? Hello? What is time management? We no. don't remember. No, no the translation. So, so what is the yeah. meaning? Uh -huh. You know, it's how, how to apply it. Eh, Como aplicar lo que se más o menos. What you need, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you when you talk about time management, uh, remember is that um, uh, how you organize uh the way of you uh take the time to organize uh 
the your role as a manager mm -hmm. of the of the warehouse. Okay, if it, it means if you need a time to think um, in a right way to organize really good uh, with efficiency your warehouse, or if you think that um, you are just thinking one time and you don't update your managing way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it's like... like person. What? What? The sign of the person. I'm sorry. L l okay. There are many dogs like barking right now. Okay. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like the way you can use it. Not as a person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> Okay, there are many, there were many dogs for okay, barking. Okay, uh, when you talk about time um, managing, it's like, for example, if you um, get the right time in order to organize very well your your um, warehouse, for example, if you talk with the uh, people how to work with, and if you uh, get a chance to explain to all the staff how's the way that you think is the correct way to use a warehouse and all of, all like that. So okay. is the way how you organize your way of managing. This time man management is uh, talking more about the manager. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So number oh, number one is list of productivity. Wow. This is important too, but I think it's more important this warehouse space and organization, then lack of cooperation between department, lack of communication between employees, then mm, we can change number two to number one, but, but all of them are important. Security receipts and purchase order, then time management. You finish already? Yes, I think. And what about the next part? What is the next part? The... What are you talking about, teacher? <laughs> ah, you didn't pay attention, right? Go no, down. Go down in the book. Yeah, that part. Oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number three. Label the warehouse an alternative to the corresponding definition. Number one, this is a method of delivering goods from the supplier to the customer directly. Direct shipping? Direct shipping. <laughs> Direct shipping. 
Um, it, it is operate as an independent business offering a range of services such as the storage, handling, and transportation on the basis of a fixed or variable fee. Uh... We finished, teacher. Finished, teacher. Okay, both activities? Yes. Okay, very nice. Hello. Hello. Do you all finish? Not teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, very nice. Awesome. Okay, if you didn't finish, we're going to find a dance right here, right? Yes, teacher. Okay, very nice. <laughs> That's the easiest part, right? <laughs> okay, Not let's just... easier. What happened? What happened? Okay, let me. Okay. Uh, you discuss here which one was the, the number one as the easiest and the five as the difficult, right? So it was going it was going to vary it. Okay. So but uh if you want to talk about this in a general way, let's talk about which one do you think is the easiest one or the least problem that you can have in a moment like this. Mm -hmm. The communication between employees. Lack of communication between employees. In our case, we put incorrect receipts and purchase orders. Okay, and another one is I create receipts, portraits, and orders. Okay, very nice, good. Another one, do, do you have something different? Yes, our group uh, thinks it's the time management. Time management. Yes. Okay, very nice. Time management. Awesome. What about the rest one? Do you have the same ones or different one? As number one. Okay, I think it's the same. Good. What about number two? Which one do you have in number two? Lack of communication between employees. Okay, this number two for your group. This was number two, right? Yes. Awesome, very nice. What about the rest? The same. The same, okay, very nice, good. The rest, which one was number two? Uh, warehouse space and organization. Warehouse space and organization. Very good. Awesome. What about the rest? Okay, very nice. Good. Let's go with number three. Which one do you have as number three? Cooperation between departments. Lack of operation between departments. Okay, 
Another one. What do you have in number three? Warehouse the same space. Dish, the same. Warehouse space. Okay, very nice. Which one do you said? The same of lack of a cooperation. Okay. Very nice. Do someone have something different? No? Okay, very nice, good. What about number four? Which one do you have in number four? Lack of communication between employees. Lack of communication between employees, okay, very nice. Someone else? Lack of cooperation between departments. Okay, lack of cooperation between departments. Good, awesome. What about the rest? The same? Okay, and the last one, which one was number five for you? Warehouse the space and organization. Warehouse space and organization, okay, very nice. Inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. Inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. Very nice, kid. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, students, this was a, a good time in order for you to have a communication. Okay, good. Uh, we're going to check the next part tomorrow because the time is over. Uh, because I want to talk about something. Okay, students, I need you from you to finish the activities on the platform from unit number three. Okay, I want to finish, uh, as you as students, finish all the activities for number uh, unit number three, okay? There are five activities, which is one per day, the Monday. Okay, in this case, we'll start from... On Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, right? So those five days. So I need you to finish those activities from unit three, okay? Because uh, uh, these are the four weeks that we're going to have right now, okay? Hasta que día, teacher? Mañana. Today. Hoy, oh, teacher, no. Okay, I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give you a chance I'm gonna give you a chance, one chance, until tomorrow. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. But I, yeah. I trust in you. It's a deal. Okay. It's a deal that you're going to uh, give me the grace for tomorrow. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay. Thank teacher. you. Okay. Welcome. Teacher. Yes. Where is <clears throat> semicolon and comma? Are you? Are you there to that uh, come out path? The use of semicolon and commas. Yeah. Are difficult then in um, in the platform. Yeah. Try to copy the the columns and the semicolons that you have there in the platform. Yes, but to come out path. Uh, try to change. Okay, there are some problems about with the uh, platform sometimes because uh, remember it's a system. So the system is uh, working according to what is assigned, uh, what, which one is uh, uh, used in the moment. Try to use capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. And if it doesn't work, try to copy the semicolon of the commas that you have there. If you have an apostrophe, try to copy the apostrophe from the platform, the one that you have in the in the sentence. And if not, try to put a, a period at the end of the sentence and try to uh, work with the different ways. It kind of complicates us sometimes because it's a platform, right? Okay, you can check, please. And okay, I'll check and I'll let you know if if something is bad. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, very nice. Okay, students, and I hope you to finish this for tomorrow. Remember, we just have five classes more. Five classes more missing. 
So you need to work on those activities because next Tuesday you have to uh, give it to me unit five. Unit four, sorry, unit four. Okay, you, you have to give me all the activities for unit four and the final test. So I start working from today with those activities, with daily activities from the week and in order not to get uh, too much work from on Tuesday for the next Tuesday, okay? Okay, I'm gonna call okay. your name. Okay, I'm gonna call your name as soon as you listen it. Tell me, Prasen, okay? Adela Trinidad González Consuera. Present. Very nice. Aminda René Figueroa de Manzano. Present. Okay. Belén Batre García. Present. Very nice. Carlos William Membreño Núñez. Present. Very nice. Debbie Yasmín Girón Ramírez. Present. Good. Domingo Alexander González. Present. Ok, Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. José Roberto Martínez Bernabé. Present teacher. Very nice. Leticia Guadalupe García de Miranda. Mariano José Paca Santa María. Present teacher. Ok, Present. very nice. Rosemary Ventura de Arguello. Rosibel del Carmen López. Present teacher, good night. Very nice, good night. Thank you. Likewise. Salvador Augusto Sorto Rivas. Present, mister. Okay, very nice. Sony Betal Barenga. Present. Okay. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemus. Present teacher. Okay. Walter Omar Castaneda Perlera. Present. Okay, and Wendy Karina Morales Avaya. Okay, very nice students. Remember to finish all the activities uh, for unit three, okay? Okay, okay. See you students for tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. Okay, blessings.